Hello and welcome to the great Rode VideoMic NTG review of 2020. We're going to have a bit of fun with this mic today and we're going to put it through some very typical uses and maybe not so typical uses. I have to go a bit extra on this review since my mic took so damn long to arrive which um, by the way I've paid for myself from my awesome local camera house. Thank you Huot. Maybe I'll put a little shout out down below there. So maybe only the cool YouTubers got their mic early. Plus, to be honest, when it finally did arrive, I was busy with weddings. So it took another week to even start this review. But alas, here we are. I'm actually using the microphone now. It's booming on a light stand just above me. And in the center, about a foot, maybe a foot and a half. So maybe 40 centimeters away from my mouth. Okay. So there's already some awesome reviews out there on the Rode VideoMic NTG. So we're just going to do something a bit different. We're going to put it through some, let's just say, typical situations, some typical scenarios. But let's see how it performs out there in the real world. Ready? Go! Okay, first we're going to do a vlog test with this thing. I've got the microphone set to 12 out of 15. The A7III's recording level is on one. So that's to get the loudest and clearest sound possible with the lowest noise. So what else is set? Okay, I've set the high pass filter to 75 hertz, which helps with a bit of wind noise. And I've also chucked on a wind protector. A spare one I had lying around the house. I don't know the exact version of it up there, but I'll try to post something similar in the description below. And because there's the extra wind protection on there, I've turned on the feature that boosts the highs. And lastly, I've enabled the feature that has dual recording and lowers the right channel by about 10, I think it's maybe 20 dBs. It's quite a lot anyway. So use that channel if it peaks. So this is my vlogging setup. I'll take a shot for you on the phone, so you can see it. You can see how big it is. Just kind of attract attention, which you don't really want. You just want to vlog in peace. And you can see my 10 centimeter spacer there, so the crane doesn't hit it when I do walking flashlight mode. So is this microphone good for short films? Let's give it a try. Uh-oh. Now I know what you're thinking. Did he fire? Six shots or only five? Well, to tell you the truth with all this excitement, I kind of lost track myself. But being this is a 44 Magnum, the most powerful handgun in the world, and would blow your head clean off, you got to ask yourself one question. Do I feel lucky? Well, do you? Pump. Hey, Sally, remember I promised I'd kill you last? I lied. <laughs> okay, now a loudness test. Aber Bakash! And uh, we'll throw in a bit of Dominic team, just for good measure. We're combining my two loves. Well, love hates. I love tennis, I hate cameras. Have you guys noticed that no matter how good the moon looks, you can never quite capture it. Look at this. See, that's like some kind of full moon mixed with smoke from the fires so it's quite impressive to me it looks amazing you can't really tell on the camera can you do you like listening to rants from a jaded wedding videographer do you like youtube do you like subscribing to random people on youtube well you've come to the right place there's an awesome subscribe button right down there for you to smash 
I can even throw in some handy videography tips. Subscribe now and all your worries will just melt away. Disclaimer that subscribing below does not even mean I will come up with any good content in the future at all. And we're back. What was this video about again? Oh yeah, the Rode VideoMic NTG. By the way, that ad was filmed with a Samsung Galaxy S10 like this, and the audio as well. But this is how it sounds when you plug the microphone straight into the phone. But now there's no way of monitoring the levels since we're using the same headphone jack. And you can also plug it straight into an iPad Pro like this using a USB-C to USB-C cable. Man, that is riveting content. Can we just go back to doing what no one else is doing, please? Sure. Right, the Clint Eastwood skit. Well, I thought the microphone was performing quite well up until then, but I kept doing take after take to try to get it right. And then the wind started picking up and then birds started getting louder. But I could have made it better by bringing the mic closer to me, booming it a bit closer, or getting someone to help out. But since I filmed these, all of these skits like a No Friends Nigel, that would have been a bit hard. I ain't your pal, dick face. Thanks, Jackson. Yeah, to improve that skit, obviously you'd take the mic off the camera, boom it a bit closer, and perhaps use a wind blimp instead of the furry cover. We had a bit of fun filming that one. So we got a bit carried away and I don't think I set the levels high enough on the Zoom H1. Because when I brought it into Adobe Audition, it sounded a bit boomy and reverby when I lifted all the volume levels up. Which means, once again, bring it closer and turn it up. Damn it. It looked high enough on the levels on the Zoom H1. Now I'm suspicious of that Zoom H1. For the loudness test, well that one seemed to work. I enabled the safety channel, but as it turns out, I didn't even need to use it. Didn't even peek. That's funny. Lucky how it works out that way, but not when you really need it to. Hi everyone, David Oastley here. I've jumped on the computer now. And I just plugged in the mic using a USB to USB-C and it works straight away. That's just magnificent. Okay, so I've jumped on B&H and I just want to talk about something that I don't think anyone else is really talking about. So if you compare the old VideoMic Pro Plus, that's that one there, if you go down to specs, you'll see that the self-noise of this one is only 14 dBs. And you go over here, let me just get my glasses. I'm lying, that was a beer, wasn't glasses. And if you go over here to specs, and that was me after I drank the beer, if you go down here to specs, you'll see that this one is 15 dBs. So the old one is 14 dBs, that's interesting. That means the old one is actually a little bit less noisy than the new one. Sorry, there it is there. Right. Anyway, back to Phil. I do feel like this is a more natural sounding microphone than the older VideoMic Pro Plus. I can live with the extra bit of self noise, I guess, although I was a bit disappointed to see that. At least this microphone doesn't get in the way when I'm trying to film using the EVF. That was annoying. Overall, I like the mic. It's just not as forgiving for finer shoots, like the film shoots. You can use it, but you've got to get the mic as close as possible, get good wind protection. And to be honest though, for film shoots, I would just go with uh, the more expensive shotgun mics. But for anything else, like on top of cam and directly to cam, and even like this setup, where I'm booming directly to cam, I think it's perfect. And obviously for weddings and events as well. So, I like it. But what do other YouTubers think? This is
Does the English YouTuber like it? It's a really, really good microphone. Hey guys, don't forget about me. I like the mic a lot. Like a lot. How about other uses? Like music performances and on stage? And what about modern day comedians? Would they like it? What do modern day comedians even talk about these days? White people. Whoa. Well, at least they're liking the mic. Well, that's all for today, folks. Tune in next time. I'll be back before you can say. Tamata wakitani hani kui u u tamata i tori pakaka piki mong ha horonoko boka wana wakatana ta hu matakua tana nuru kawa meki tora.